Hello everyone, David here. Now, if you've been watching my channel, you'll know that I like photography and I also like dancing. And one of the things I do is I take photographs of dancers and some of them actually turn out to be quite good. Now, a few people have asked me how I make them and take them. So in this video, I just want to talk about the kind of equipment that I use to take photographs of dancers and also the settings I use on my camera at the time and also my kind of general approach and philosophy to how I frame up the shot and get those pictures. Okay, let's go. Okay, so let's talk about camera equipment. Um, now, generally these venues are quite sort of dimly lit. You could use a flash while you're photographing these dancers, but I find that's very distracting for them uh, and for everyone else on the dance floor. So you want to get a camera with as large a sensor as possible so that it's most sensitive to light. So I'd recommend you get a full frame camera, something like the Sony a7 III or what I use, which is the Sony a7C. Now, I'm a massive Sony fanboy, but you know, there are Canon and Fuji equivalents if you look them up. But the important thing is to get a full frame camera with an interchangeable lens system. And as for the lenses themselves, I recommend you get as fast a lens as you can in about the 50 millimeter range. What do I mean by a fast lens? Well, I mean one that lets in as much light as possible. Um, if you've seen the f-stop on lenses, you want one with as low an f-stop as possible that still autofocus and in about the 50 millimeter range. The Sony f1.8 50 millimeter completely bog standard lens, um, which now I think goes second hand for a pretty good price. Um, that's a great recommendation. Uh, there's also the 55 millimeter Sony Zeiss um, f1.8. I did a lot of um, dancing photography with that and the results came out pretty well. Um, I've got the 50mm f1.2 G Master, which is an absolute beast, but it's also very expensive and very heavy. So um, if you can't uh, afford that kind of monster of a lens, um, there are definitely cheaper alternatives available. Around 50mm is a good kind of natural feeling field of view as well, although you can always crop in a bit later if you want. Um, but yeah, full frame camera, fast lens, and then we're ready to talk about settings. So I recommend you shoot with your lens as wide open as possible, i.e. at its lowest possible f-stop number. And this will just let in as much light as possible and help combat noise in the resulting photograph. If you take a photo with uh, a very narrow aperture, i.e. a high f-stop number, it means not much light is getting in, you'll get a very dimly uh, lit photo and you'll have to really crank up the exposure either on the camera or in post-processing. And this will introduce a lot of noise, you know, those kind of like little uh, dots of of randomly colored light in the photo. So yeah, wide open aperture. And then when it comes to shutter speed, you want to really freeze the motion, ideally. So I would aim for a shutter speed at around 100th or 1 125th of a second. Any slower than that, sort of around a 60th of a second or an 80th of a second, and you'll start seeing motion blur in your pictures, which may be what you want, but usually you want the motion to look still, even if it's halfway through a dynamic movement like hair flicking through the air. And once you start cranking the shutter speed even faster, you know, towards 150th of a second or 200th of a second or more, um, you will definitely freeze the motion. But again, you're letting in less light, so you will get a noisier photograph out of the other end. So aim for about 100th or 125th of a second um, to really get those dancers who are usually moving quite quickly into um, looking quite frozen in place. And I'd like to talk about focus settings as well. So usually the default setting on a camera is set to single autofocus. And that means that as you press the shutter button down halfway, the camera will try and attain focus for that shot. And when you press the shutter button down all the way, it takes the photo. Now that is really useful if you're taking, you know, someone's birthday photograph while they're standing there posing. Um, but for dancers, because they're moving all over the place, between attaining focus and taking the shot, they can have moved out of focus. So I recommend you put your camera into continuous autofocus mode so that you're constantly tracking them. And with the newer Sony cameras that also look for eye autofocus, um, it means that it will often lock on to the eye really quickly and you'll get that shot in focus even as the dancers are moving quickly in front of you. So go into your focus settings and change it from single autofocus to continuous autofocus. And of course, if you're hardcore, you can try manual focus, um, but when you're dealing with such a narrow field of view, it's very difficult to really nail focus by adjusting it manually. And I find autofocus is so good these days, I'd rather let the camera do it automatically. 
And then, of course, the process doesn't stop um, when you press the shutter button. Go in and edit your photos afterwards. Take lots of pictures uh, and then just take a few that you think are the best ones. I find I have a hit rate of about 1 in 5 to 1 in 10 photos on a bad day. Um, but then it means that I've really got the best ones. Go in using some software like Adobe Lightroom or Luminar. I've gone back to Lightroom now just because it's so performant uh, and so reliable and the tools are really great. Um, but go in and uh, change the, the lighting. Uh, you can use the automatic adjustments for a really good head start and then tweak it to your liking after that. Um, do spot removal, uh, uh, do noise removal, uh, do some cropping. Uh, and you can even add kind of linear gradients or radial gradients if you want to kind of bring the focus into some specific part of the photograph. But do go in and edit your photos afterwards and you'll make them at least twice as good. And so a note about framing your shots. Personally, I like to get quite close to the subjects. Um, I really want to kind of see the expression on their faces and try and capture some of that joy. I don't mind if I end up chopping off some limbs or part of their body um, to focus on something that's more interesting and central in the shot. I think you want to really draw people into your frame um, and I wouldn't worry about capturing their entire body or you know them and their entire partner. Um, just try and focus on something that's interesting um, and close in and I think that's kind of a more rewarding shot at the end of the day. But of course now we're getting into the highly subjective um, topic of art and of course this varies entirely on your style and what you want to capture. Mambo number three as you hook and change places. Men look over your right shoulder is the space. Good. Go. Travel, travel. Over the head, down to the shoulder, out to the side, and accommodate the ladies into your right arm. Lovely stuff. Right. So thanks again, Tim. So, first of all, who are you and what do you do? Um, I'm Tim. Um, I'm Director of Operations for Ciroc, so I run a lot of the, um, the operations around the country. Uh, I also manage the dance department as well, so I'm responsible for a lot of the, the movements, the choreographies, the things that the teachers teach on stage, is, is what I do in Ciroc. Whenever I'm teaching people to dance, particularly for competitions where aesthetic is important, you always basically tell them that at any stage a photo could be taken. So you need to think about every kind of clip that you're, you're, you're making as a dancer, every transition, every frozen position, would it look good in, in, a, in a frozen shot? Um, I think generally the main issue that goes wrong with dancers is eye line for right. me. Right. So the first, the first thing that you teach is for dancers to look up, so they, they lift their head, but then the doubt or the questioning or the process takes their eyes to the floor and it actually doesn't matter how much of your body is presenting up unless that, that face is presenting up as well. So eye line is a, is a very key thing for, right. for dancers to focus on. Um, but posture, I mean you hear teachers talking about it all the time, the second that the, the, the posture closes, the shoulders come forwards, the chest goes down, it's more than just an aesthetic, it's an emotion that a dancer's telling you that they're not bothered or they're scared or they're nervous versus that kind of confidence, open, broad-shouldered, open-chested, head up, eyeline forwards, assertiveness on the dance floor. Okay, okay, so um, do you think it's possible to overdo it? Can people sort of hear that and then think like, right, I've got to stretch everything and, and make everything <laughs> super straight and, and uh, as much as possible? Yeah, I think it's got to be authentic. Um, in the same way that if you're having a conversation with someone and they're being inauthentic, it can be a little bit irritating. Um, it can be a little bit overwhelming for a dancer if they're pushing their chest out for the purpose of looking confident. Actually, if you are feeling confident, you have that natural air about you. And if you're making sure your eye line is forwards too purposefully, you're going to look a little bit weird and intense. Whereas if your focus is looking up because you're enjoying the, the sensation of the dance or you're enjoying the presentation to the crowd, that, that authenticity will always carry through to a still frame as well. Right, okay. And specifically in photographs, if you see a picture of someone dancing, what, what are you most likely to like about it, if it's good? Particularly the dance that we do at Ciroc is, is, is different to a lot of other styles of dancing, but the fact that we're a partner dance, the first thing that strikes me is always the interaction between the partnership. And interaction doesn't necessarily mean there has to be eye contact, that's only one sense of interaction. Uh, is, is there a partnership? Do they look physically engaged with each other with what they're doing, or do they look disengaged, a bit bored, kind of looking for the next dancer that they're, they're going to be looking for? So there's this physical connection that you can have with your partner that shows that you are in tune with them when you are moving and, and that I mean that's a number of things that's eye contact that's head that's upper body that's proximity that's intensity there's, there's so many different flavors that can come through in a photo um, but 
it will be it will be captured in that moment how you are feeling about your partner. Right. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. For sure. Cool. Uh, well, thank you very much. That's no. all to know. How can Pleasure. people find out about Ciroc? How can people find out about Ciroc? Um, through our very cool website, which is Ciroc.com. <laughs> okay. Spelled C E R O C. Um, yeah. So come and come and find a dance class and come and learn how to look good with a partner. <laughs> <laughs> So thanks very much to Tim for that interview. And if you want to come to his classes, they are every Monday night at Pimlico in central London. Um, check it out. It's really good fun. So there you go. That's how to photograph dancers. Um, if you feel like I've missed anything out or got anything horribly wrong, feel free to correct me in the comments section down below. I think these tips will also be useful um, maybe for some kind of sports applications. You know, if you're trying to photograph very fast moving people in not ideal lighting conditions, then I think a lot of these same tips and tricks will apply. Well, I hope this video was useful. Um, if so, then leave me a like down below and you can help me out by subscribing to my channel as well. Okay, see you next time.